Can you run gear oil in an engine? Let's find out. Some political science with my balls. Trash that fresh engine. All right, here we go. You're not gonna believe this oil pressure. Rookie move. I'm seeing worse. Where's my thinking cap? Bombs away. That's the good, oh shit. This is my 1975 C20 service body truck. It's got a pretty basic 350 small block Chevy. It's got an extra medium cam and a small Wean 177 blower. Makes about 400 horsepower going downhill with a tailwind. That engine's got about 1200 miles on it from Hot Rod Power Tour. So it's time for an oil change. It's currently running Valvoline VR1 20W50 racing oil. It needs to be running a high zinc 10W40, which I have right here, but I'm gonna run gear oil for science. And right about now, you're probably thinking that I'm an idiot and that I'm gonna trash that fresh engine. And that's certainly a possibility, but there's only one way to find out. What could possibly go wrong? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna fire it up with a 20W50 in it. We're gonna check the oil pressure, hot and cold. Then I'm gonna change out the 20W50 with a 75W85 gear oil. And then I'm going to note the hot and cold oil pressures again. And then I'm gonna give you the science behind what did or didn't happen. But first, have you ever wondered why gear oil smells like a sack full of farts? It's because gear oils contain a truckload of extreme pressure additives. And those additives are generally comprised of a sulfur-based compound. And as you learned in high school algebra, sulfur is made from dinosaur butts. So it smells like butts. But we'll circle around to that butt stuff later. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna shoot the oil pan with an infrared thermometer. All right, the oil pan is 66 degrees. I don't want y'all accusing me of manipulating the oil temperature to get the desired result. All right, let's fire it up and get a cold idle. Whoa. Parking brake. Let's fire it up and get a cold idle oil pressure with a 20W50. All right, let's call that 37. I know that's not the most accurate gauge. I've got a digital gauge on my Duramax, but it holds 10 quarts and I'm not buying 10 quarts of gear oil. This stuff's expensive. I haven't been ran in about seven or eight months. Got flat spots on the tires and cobwebs that need blowing out. All right, so I'm at 2,000 RPM. I'm not sure how well you see the gauge, but it's pretty much exactly 45 PSI. All right, we're back in the garage. Let's go ahead and get a hot idle temperature. It's obviously idling a lot higher now that it's hot, but it looks like our pressures, I'm gonna call that 36-ish. So it's not much lower than the cold idle, but again, we're at a much higher RPM, so that seems okay-ish. Let's drain the oil. I'd forgotten I had a Fomoto valve on here. That's nice. Makes life a little easier. The oil was 180 degrees when I parked the truck just for reference. Now I'm not changing the filter. I don't wanna make any more test variables for you guys to pick at, but I am gonna dump the engine oil out of it and fill it back up with gear oil. Hot oil. All right, we're back on the bench. All right, same oil filter that came off the truck. It's been on there a year. It's had 20 fitty in it, 20 fitty. All right, 75W85, just like in the gallon jug. I want y'all to watch me open this thing now. I want y'all to think I'm tricking you. There we go. Get all that foil out of there. Don't want to destroy an engine. Now I know some people don't like to fill oil filters. They say it's wrong. Some people say it's wrong to not fill them. So I'm gonna fill it. I'm gonna fill it about halfway up. There you go. Half full. No, well, that's half. Delicious. All right, same oil filter. Back in place, full of gear oil. Now y'all know I'm not afraid to put my screw ups on film. I was pulling the breather off to pour oil in the valve cover. That's not an abnormal thing to do. That's what I used to do on my 71 back in uh, high school. The thing is, it's it's got an oil fill cap right here. That's, that's where the oil goes. I'm on it today. Where's my thinking cap? All right, we're gonna put in the 75W85. And since I know the internet loves to try and catch me in a lie, here you go, breaking the seal right here on camera. And this is my favorite part of the video. This is the part where y'all tell me I'm a rookie because I don't, nope, I almost spilt it already. Rookie move. There we go. I just got my engineer on. Zip tie. That funnel won't fall over now. Like I was saying, you guys like to criticize the way I pour oil because a pro pours with a jug on its side or inverted. 
I don't care how you pour oil. And if pouring oil is the worst thing you've got to worry about in this life, you're doing good. Anywho, it's four quarts. I'm just going to put it all on there. I got no other use for it. There you go, pros. I'm pouring it like you pour it. I'm getting carpal tunnel in the process. The whole dang bottle. I promise, if smell of vision was a real thing, you would not be doubting that I just poured gear oil in this engine. Perfectly overfilled, just like it should be. All right, looks like our gear oil is about 70 degrees. That's close enough. Let's say a little prayer, fire it off and see what happens. All right, here we go. Oh, <laughs> you're not gonna believe this oil pressure. Yep, it's pretty much the same. Let's go ahead and put some heat in it and see what the pressure looks like when it's hot. Better do this quick. Storm coming. Better get home before the storm hits. Now, I'm not certain the wipers actually work. All right, here we are with the gear oil. 2,000 RPM, looks like 45. 45 PSI. Just like the 2050. All right, one last oil pressure. Hot idle oil pressure. It's actually idled down a little bit from the first time we did this. And it looks like about 32. Same as the 2050 oil. How could this be? Okay, now you're all disappointed that my engine didn't grenade. And you're probably wondering if you just got scammed because the oil pressure didn't even go up. And that goes against everything you've ever believed about oil pressure. So what just happened? 75W85 gear oil is actually thinner and 20W50 engine oil. Yep, you heard that right. I moved up to the lab, and now we're gonna do some political science with my balls. Because some of you are probably still a little skeptical of my 50-year-old anal log gauge. And that's completely understandable. But now I'm wearing a lab coat and drinking sparkling water. So I should be instantly believable. Maybe. Okay, let's do some science. I've got balls of steel that are gonna race downhill through two different oils and two different pieces of scientific glassware named Don and Joe for no particular reason. I'm gonna start with two different engine oils just to give you a reference point. Let's use 15W40 and Donald in the red corner on the far right. And some of this modern, environmentally friendlier 0W20 and Joe in the blue corner on the far left. I chose red on the right and blue on the left for no particular reason, probably. I think I'll use my yellow funnel named Libby. Seems appropriate. Mm. That's the good, oh Mm-hmm. Let's put that right there. 100 milliliters is less than you think. I thought this stuff was non-alcoholic. Maybe next time we keep the oil inside the glass. Come on, Jamin, do better. That is thin. Wow, is this what they put in Teslas? Thanks, Libby. Where's my balls? I had to borrow these from my wife. There we go. Tiny, shiny balls. All right. This really isn't even going to be fair. Torque oil, mile per gallon oil. His and hers. Oh, and by the way, all of these oils are 68 degrees. They've been in this room all night. All right. Bombs away. Well, pretty definitive. Thicker, thinner, big ass mess. Should probably find a way to do that without getting it everywhere. Hmm. Do better, Jamin. See if we can retrieve these balls with a magnet. Not gonna lie, that worked better than I thought it would. Finally, something goes correctly. It's a weird sound. All right, let's get back to gear oil versus engine oil. Let's give Libby a break on this one. She's tired from straddling the fence. All right, 75W85 gear oil, and it still stinks. All right, for round two, we've got the same 15W40 over here in the red corner, and we've got the 75W85 over here in the blue corner. Now, one common sense says the ball in the engine oil should beat the ball in the gear oil by a Canadian mile. You know, because engine oil is thinner than gear oil. Allegedly. Well, let's see what happens. Fire in the hole. Mm. 
the gear oil just won by a lot. And I think I've proven my point. Maybe my 50 year old gauge is right after all, but I don't want to mislead you. I chose 75W85 for a reason. This is the thinnest gear oil you can buy, I think. But nobody has this crap in their garage. I honestly don't even know why it exists. So let's test some real gear oil against the engine oil. It's pretty thick. This might be a close race. I'm getting a cramp. Well, that's thicker than Katy Perry's bra strap. Yep, that's gear oil. I bet Katy Perry smells better than that. All right, round three, 15W40 and mystery gear oil. Fire in the hole. Pretty slow. It's probably what you guys have been expecting this entire time. Unless you live in Death Valley, it's probably not a good idea to put this one in an engine. Let's go back to the garage. It smells like a porta potty in here. A little known fact about engine oil viscosity grades and gear oil viscosity grades is that they're on two totally different scales. It's like comparing Fahrenheit temperatures and Celsius temperatures. SAE J300 is the engine oil spec and SAE J306 is the gear oil spec. And apparently the committees that authored those two specifications never spoke with each other. This graphic shows how engine oil and gear oil viscosities correlate with each other. This is a multi-grade gear oil. So it has a cold viscosity grade of 75W and a hot viscosity grade of 85. As you can see, 75W gear oil overlaps with 10W, 15W, and SAE 20W engine oil grades. SAE 20 and 20W are basically the same thing for the purposes of this demonstration. And you can see that the SAE 85 gear oil overlaps with the top end of the SAE 30 and bottom end of the SAE 40 engine oil specifications. If you don't like that chart, here's two more that will show you the exact same thing. So contrary to what you've believed your entire lives, these numbers have nothing to do with each other. And some gear oils are actually thinner than some engine oils. So does that mean it's okay to use gear oil in your engine? Absolutely not. Gear oil is not designed to handle the combustion byproducts like engine oil is. So it can't keep your engine internals properly cleaned. Additionally, remember that dinosaur butt stuff we were talking about earlier? All the sulfur and the extreme pressure additives in the gear oil like to react with all the combustion byproducts to form sulfuric acid. And according to Al Gore's internet, sulfuric acid is bad for engines, probably. So unless it's the zombie apocalypse or you're 10 miles off grid and gear oil is the only thing you have left to keep your rig in service, don't put gear oil in your engine. And if you do, put it on the YouTubes for the rest of us to watch. But be forewarned, it'll smell like butt everywhere you go. All right, so now I've made you all lubrication specialists. Why don't you go tickle that like and subscribe button. Science is expensive and I need your support. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, Stay curious.